All right, you guys. If you click into this video, you know the subject, so I'm not going to do an introduction. <laughs> um, today's June, Tuesday, June, what, 4th or 3rd? 4th, 4th, 2019. <sighs> On Saturday of last week, I found out that I miscarried my fourth baby. So far, I've had one successful pregnancy. My daughter is six year old and she is everything. <laughs> uh, I had a miscarriage after that. After that, I had to interrupt the pregnancy because of chromosome, chromosome abnormality. And then now I just had another miscarriage. I'm telling you all that because I want you to understand my state of mind. I've never talked about my uh, pregnancy interruption uh, because I'm not ready to. Um, all these pregnancies are wanted pregnancies. Uh, and my husband and I are both carrier of a certain disease. And we both agree that we do not want to bring a sick child into this world. We do not want our baby to suffer. We do not want our baby's life spent to be shortened. So this video is not about abortion. It's not about pro-choice, pro-life. I am pro-life, um, but I am pro-healthy life of the mother and of the baby. If you have a problem with that, leave. If we're on the same pace, welcome. If this is your first miscarriage, I highly recommend you stop this video and you go and take a look at this video I'm linking right there for you guys, where you will have my reaction just when I found out, well, just when I, the day I found out that I was mis, that I was having, that I had a miscarriage. If this is if this is your second, third, or fourth miscarriage, um, hopefully this video will help you through the process. Uh, okay, so first I'm going to talk about my pregnancy and how I found out I was pregnant to how I found out I was miscarrying, and then I'm going to talk about my mental state i'm going to talk about my family a little bit and then that's it okay so i first found out i was pregnant on a friday afternoon and it was the friday before mother's day weekend which was early may 2019. um i was a couple days late on my period and i decided to take a pregnancy test because it, at some point it didn't feel like my period was ever gonna come so I was like this is weird uh, to be a couple days late is one thing but usually you feel like your period is about to come you feel heavy down there you're like okay any day now and towards the end of the second day of late period I was like this is not happening anytime soon I need to take a pregnancy test and of course it was positive um, I felt all the symptoms Boobs hurting, nipples hurting, um, out of breath, slight nausea, exhaustion. So all the symptoms were there, you know, um, nothing really to worry about. Um, at six weeks and five days, I um, had my first OBG appointment. So my OBG knows my history has been the same OBG following me for the past three pregnancies so he didn't even do a pregnancy test on me he put me straight into the sonogram <laughs> we found the sac it was implanted in my uterus but we couldn't find any fetus in there yet um, and then when he measured the size of the sac it measured five weeks and five days which is a whole week younger than what I actually was I was not too happy about that, but my OBG didn't seem to be too concerned about it. So I was like, okay. Then he sent me to get a blood work to, to see how my HCG level was. That was Tuesday last week. My HCG level came back at 
5,000, which was, according to him, a good number. He wanted me to go back on Saturday to do another HCG test, which I did. Um, I went to the lab on Saturday morning. I went there alone. And uh, Nigel was with Ella. Now, Ella didn't know about this pregnancy. Why? Because, well, it was too early, first of all. And then she she's very ready to be a big sister and I did not want her to be disappointed but she knew something was going on I think she knew I was pregnant and she knew that on Saturday morning I was going to the doctor so on Saturday morning I go and do my blood check my blood work and then when, when I'm done I go to use the bathroom at the lab and when I use the bathroom, I see dark brown blood coming out. So I decide to go to the ER right away. I go to the ER and they do another blood work on me to check my HCG level. They do a sonogram, a transvaginal sonogram, I think that's how you say, where they put it through your vagina to get closer to the uterus so they can get a closer picture. That's where I got to see the baby, the little fetus in the sack but no heartbeat at this point I'm seven weeks pregnant so I'm like that is definitely not a good sign my blood work finally comes back and it's at 2,500 which is half of what it was on Tuesday so at this point I know that I'm I'm just losing the baby again um, so I'm at the hospital alone because again Nigel's with Ella and I don't want her to come to the hospital I don't want her to see me with thing I had like a not an IV but you know like the blood thing like they were ready to put me on an IV or whatnot I don't want her to see me in that situation in that environment uh, so I'm there on my own Nigel asked me do you want me to come I can come I'm like no I, I got this Next thing you know, um, the doctor comes in, tells me the bad news. And my first reaction is, well, I'm angry. I'm fucking pissed. Why? Because after all the crap I went through, why can't I just have a healthy baby already? You know, this is not fair. Give me a effing break. Like, why? You know? And then... My other reaction is I'm thankful because my body is actually processing it. Unlike the last time where I had a missed miscarriage and my body didn't process anything, I had to have a DNC. I, actually, more than that, I had to have abortion pills to help my body start the process, which didn't work, two rounds, which didn't work, to end up having a DNC this time my body is doing the job so yay body I am so thankful and another thing is that after all what I've been through like I said earlier uh, a missed miscarriage uh, 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 interrupting a pregnancy I don't want to say that this miscarriage that's happening to me right now is less of but it doesn't feel as painful as what I went through this doesn't mean that the life of this baby that I'm losing is less of a life or it means less to me it still is a life it still is a pregnancy that did not go through but the difference is that the person I am today is tougher than the person I was back then. So instead of feeling like a fresh, deep cut, it feels like a pinch. I think only the women who went through child uh, uh, birth lost I don't know you say it but losing a baby several times can understand what I'm talking about 
Now, that's not to say I didn't cry. Of course I did cry. And when I see some of my sisters, girlfriends who know about this, and they come in and they hug me, of course I'm crying. But I choose to focus on the fact that I can make life. I am blessed with the ability to create life. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. This time it didn't. Now I have two options in front of me. Am I going to focus on the death part of this situation or am I going to focus on the life part of this situation? I did focus on death at some point and it left me completely drained. But when I choose to focus on life, <laughs> guess what happens to my soul? Fulfillment. So it's way easier for me to go there and it's way healthier for me to go there than, come here, open it. Oh. Um, then to then to feel sorry for myself and and focus on the fact that I lost those babies. What else can I say? As far as my daughter goes, like I said to you guys earlier, she kind of knew that I was pregnant, although we never told her I was. She was like, oh, a baby's coming soon, a baby's coming soon, it's crazy. Um, and when I came back from the ER, she was like, so you saw the doctor? Did he find a baby in your belly? And I was like, I did go to the doctor, but he didn't find any babies in my bellies. When I tell you guys, she started crying. Everything she had, which made it impossible for me to keep my cool. Like I, I started crying too. I had to call Nigel so he could, he could take her so I could get out of the situation and then get a glass of wine and just you know, drink. She still doesn't know that I was pregnant, although she does, but it was never confirmed. Um, but one thing's for sure is that she is ready to be a big sister, which puts even more pressure on me to <laughs> get a healthy baby out out of this womb of mine. So I have about three options in front of me. Either we try again, either we go through IVF, or we adopt. Right now, I can't tell you what round we're gonna go. Um, but what I can tell you is that I am okay. Um, unless uh -uh. Unlike the first miscarriage, unlike the abortion, this miscarriage feels more like a bad pinch that leaves a bruise than a deep cut that makes you bleed and takes a long time to heal, if that makes any sense. Again, if you went through several miscarriage, I think you will get that imagery better than if you are going through your first miscarriage. So hopefully this can help uh, other women deal with their situation. Um, this is me. This is Louisa going for her life. I'm not saying that I've got the answer to everything. I'm just sharing with you what I'm going through. It works for me, um, but I know that I'm a strong woman and I hope that I can, that a little bit of that strength can reach you and help you go through your journey. Um, and I can't help but thinking about my mother, who was such a strong woman, too. She passed away, unfortunately, 10 years ago. 
uh, but I got it from her. <laughs> so I just want to acknowledge that for a quick second while I go through this live event. Okay, you guys, I am done. This is it for this video. I was, I was trying to be as, how you say, I was trying to go through different subject as much as I can, but I feel like I went all over the place. <laughs> but anyways, I hope this whole thing makes sense to you guys. Um, if it does help you, please leave me a comment below. If you're here to judge me, please leave a comment below and um, yeah, I don't care because <laughs> this is not about you. Um, this is about me and this is about all the women who are going through something similar and who can relate to that. So your judgment here is not welcome and it's, we don't care. All right, my loves, I'm going to go. I, I love you so much. For those of you who follow me, Thank you so much for your support. Uh, for those of you who follow me on Instagram and you know saw what was going on, thank you so much for that, for those messages, for those likes, for, for the support. It means everything. All right, you guys, I'm all set with this video. I hope this could help some of you. Um, I'll see you guys next week with a new video. Until then, my loves, have a beautiful life. Au revoir. Et à bientôt. <rire> hey, c'est la vie. <musique>